Today I've got a 2DS that won't turn on. Let me show you. It tries to power on and then makes that popping noise as it shuts off. I'll play it one more time. So that just won't do. Let's take it apart and see what's going on. You can unfasten these upper two screws to get into the battery compartment. From there, remove the battery and there are 10 more screws around the perimeter. This is strange. The large flex cable under the back plate should be connected, but it isn't. Same story with the joystick connection. And even two down here. The one on the right looks like it's plugged in, but the cable isn't fully inserted. So we'll get those mainboard connections plugged in properly. Does that do anything for us? Nope. How about if we also attach the backplate connector? Double nope. We've got to try something else. I've heard that this issue can be caused by a bad connection with the screen or digitizer to the board. Since I already checked those connections, I'm going deeper to see if there's a separate problem within the components themselves. Well, here's something. This screen has spider line cracks all over it meaning it's likely broken and not being recognized by the system, which would explain why it shuts itself off right away. Not because of a bad connection, but a bad screen. The only thing I can think to try is replacing it with this new one I got off eBay. In preparation for the new screen going in, I'm using tape to remove any dust from the inside of the face plates. I'm doing the same thing on this adhesive border, which needs to be removed from the old screen and placed on the new one. Luckily, the adhesive isn't very strong, so it's peeling up without much effort. Now to remove the protective liner on the new screen and get the border adhesive in place. It should look something like this on the new screen. Then we can pop it in the shell while being mindful of those nearby flex ribbons. Get that thumbstick back into place and screw it down. For the circuit board, we need to feed the large flex tails through that slot and be mindful of the speaker and four smaller flex ribbons as we set it down. Slightly lift the back end of the board to get the top plate in place and screw it down. The shoulder buttons can be a little tricky. I'll get the plastic bit in the right spot and then use the tweezers to push the spring down onto the post. At this point, all 10 screws for the circuit board can be installed. With the board secured, we can get the flex ribbons back in place. Starting with the three at the bottom, the thumb stick, the screen cables, and last is the back shell. Now we can put the back shell into place and reinsert the side plates. On the right side, make sure this moving plastic part mates properly with the volume slider. Then set the back shell to its final position and secure it with the 10 screws we removed at the start. Pop in the battery, fasten the lid, and the assembly is complete. Let's give this thing a test. Would you look at that? It works! Who would have thought that a busted screen would prevent a handheld from powering on? It's good to see that that was our only problem though. As far as I can tell, everything is now working perfectly. So if your system is having problems like this one had at the beginning, I'd recommend checking that the screen connection is good and that the screen itself isn't damaged. In this case, replacing the screen solved the issue, and we're back in business with the 2DS. Unfortunately, the replacement screen costs almost as much as just buying a working one of these secondhand, so definitely something to keep in mind when weighing your options. I guess that's it for today. I hope you took something useful out of this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.